Hi guys, I'm Johnny from The PE Tutor. Thanks for taking your time to watch today's mini lesson. It's actually from a series that we've just finished putting together for all of our level two BTEC sports students. So if you are studying for that unit one exam or you're a teacher and you have your own students preparing for that exam, then please do subscribe to this channel and you can use all of our mini lessons uploaded here on YouTube or click on the link below. We've actually just finished putting together a free flashcard pack for all students and teachers alike to use to really help them prepare for that exam. Anyway, hope you enjoy the lesson and I'll see you again soon. So in today's mini lesson, we're gonna be looking at how to measure heart rate. Now for your exam, you'll need to be able to explain how to measure heart rate at both rest and during exercise. And there's two primary methods that you need to know for that exam. The first method is the simplest. This is to wear specialist equipment such as sport watches or heart rate monitors that you wear around your chest. The advantages of using specialist equipment is that it's more likely to be accurate and we don't have to stop exercise in order to track or measure our heart rate. Thirdly, we can also look back at heart rates over time, which is great for tracking progress and for setting new goals. Performers do need to be aware of the possible drawbacks of it, such as cost of purchasing them, as well as knowledge of how to use them. It could be that they need to be instructed or learn how to use them properly before they do start to implement them in their training. The second method of measuring heart rate is more likely to be asked in your unit one exam. And this is the manual method for checking our pulse. Now our pulse is our heart rate, or how many times does our heart beat every 60 seconds? And there's two easily accessible locations on our body where we can actually find and take our pulse from. This is our radial artery located in our wrist and our carotid artery located in our neck. Now, in taking our pulse, there's three steps that we need to be aware of. Step one, rest. Because every time we move, be it walking around, be it jogging, be it playing sport, the muscles that we engage or contract and relax in order to, to cause that movement, they're demanding oxygen. And as soon as there's an oxygen demand taking place inside of our body, our heart contracts or beats faster in order to increase the blood supply around the body. So, by minimizing movement, we stop our muscles from contracting and our heart is no longer needed to beat, therefore it goes and falls right the way down to its resting level. Step two, locate our pulse. Now, to locate our pulse, we have two areas in our body. We have our radial artery and we have our carotid artery. The first location that we're gonna find is our radial artery. The first thing you need to do is take an arm. You then rotate it so your palm is facing upwards. You then take your index and middle finger pressed together and you're searching for a blood vessel that is coming down from elbow to wrist closest to the thumb joint or where the thumb meets our wrist. So this is just off center and towards the outside or the exterior edge of our wrist. And what we do is rest our fingers gently on that location and we're looking for a light beat of blood through that blood vessel. The second location that we're looking for is our carotid artery. Now in order to find our carotid artery, what we need to do is tilt our head back slightly and we take again our index and our middle finger and we're looking not to press them into the middle of our neck but slightly round to the right hand side. So if we're using our right hand to find our pulse, we go round to the right hand side of our windpipe. Once our fingers are in that area, we might need to push in ever so slightly until we can feel a pulse against our fingers. And step three, measure our pulse. Now in order to measure our heart rate, not only do we need to count the pulses, but we also need to be timing how long we're counting for. Now the most accurate way to do this is to count for 60 seconds because there's 60 seconds in a minute and the heart rate is measured in beats per minute. So once we found our pulse, we start a timer for 60 seconds and we count each time we feel that pulse against our fingers. It may be worthwhile to have a partner who can look at the stopwatch or the watch that you're using to tell you when 60 seconds is up. Otherwise you might get distracted by counting pulses and looking at the watch at the same time. 
So that's all well and good when we're resting and we have time to sit down, to find our pulse and to count over a period of 60 seconds to get an accurate heart rate. But what happens when we're exercising? Well, we still use the same two locations if we're not using that specialist equipment, but this time we need to simplify our measuring techniques. So firstly, a performer needs to be confident that they can locate their pulse very quickly. We then just need to simplify our calculation techniques. Instead of working out our heart rate over a period of 60 seconds, instead we work it out over a period of 6 seconds and multiply our answer by 10. This means that we don't have to stop exercising for a very long period of time, which means our heart rate won't actually be affected. So, for example, a jogger who is wanting to measure their exercising heart rate might come to a stop for 6 seconds. They quickly locate their carotid artery or their radial artery pulse, they look at their watch, and they time six seconds. Now in that six second window, they're still counting how many pulses that they feel. Once they have this number, if they were to multiply it by 10, this will give them their beats per minute because six seconds multiplied by 10 gives a 60 second estimate. So if this jogger were to count 12 pulses in a six second period, by multiplying that number by 10, we arrive at a number of 120 beats per minute. So, to recap, when measuring heart rate, we can use two main methods, either specialist equipment or by finding and measuring our pulse. The specialist equipment is accurate, however, it might cost money and it might take instruction or knowledge how to use correctly. When measuring our pulse, there's two locations that we use. That could be our radial artery or our carotid artery in our neck. And there's three main steps for when we measure our pulse. Firstly, for our resting heart rate, we must rest. Then we locate that pulse, then we measure. At rest, we can measure that over a 60 second period to make it as accurate as possible. However, when exercising, we measure it over a six second period and multiply that answer by 10. So, that was our mini lesson on how to measure heart rate. If you liked it, be sure to hit subscribe and we'll keep you updated with all the videos that we're gonna be bringing you for this BTEC Sport Unit 1 exam. I'll see you next time.